But let me let me real quick let me see if I can pull something up here on the stage. Okay, so this is your typical sort of um, political uh, map, right? The the left and right. I remember somebody showed me this when I was in school, and to be honest, I think it is absolute garbage. Okay, um, because I think the authoritarian libertarian axis, right? People are either more authoritarian, meaning they want more government sort of to force people to do things, right? And then on the other side is then for some reason they choose economic left and right as if left and right is just a function of economics. Like, no, economics is one issue that people have opinions on. And so that map never made sense. So I actually made a map to try and orient people politically as I see it, right? And I want to get your guys' thoughts on this. Um, I'm going to share a different tab here. Um, and this is what it's about. So I agree with the, you have the political axis, okay? When you're dealing with the government, I always tell people, what does the government do? And you guys can tell me if you disagree with this. The government makes laws, okay? When you boil down what government actually is, from my perspective, is that government is an agent of force. Okay. They, I always tell people they make laws. They don't make suggestions. It's either you do it. And if you don't do it, someone with a gun shows up with at your house and makes you do it or else they put you in their car and they take you away and they put you in a cage. Okay. Like for everything the government does. So I always kind of step back and my political philosophy kind of stems from this root. I say, look, the government is about using force and coercion. Now, I'm a Latter-day Saint. I'm a Christian. I should have some qualms about forcing people to do things, right? And so I want to go back real quick to that political axis, though. Left and right, as I see it, on the political front is a function of, and 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 you can just say, let's just call it instead of left and right, let's just call it political authoritarianism or political libertarianism. Liberty, libertarian means like get the government out of it, leave people alone, quit forcing people to do things. But the other thing is, is I, I break up left and right on the other axis along, axis along ethics, okay? Meaning kind of what do you believe should be done in society, right? So, because really it, politi politics in my mind sort of comes down to this question. How should things be, right? How should society be? That's That's a function of your ethics. That's the should. That's your moral compass, right? So things should be this way and then should and then the question becomes are you going to force society to be that way or are you going to uh leave people alone I my my view of government and politics this is why I fall on the right I'm not super far on the right on this horizontal axis in the sense that I'm not like some Amish person, right? Like I, I believe the Latter-day Saints sort of ethics or I think in the middle of that, they're in a good place. Um, but politically I'm very hard libertarian. There are very few things I'm willing to say or, or that I feel morally justify the use of violent force against another person. Ezra Taft Benson gave his amazing speech. Which I made a video and put it on my channel. It was so good about the proper role of government. Because I think and people say, oh, you got to keep your religion out of politics. Bull crap. I think this entire thing is religious. The use of force is a religious and moral question. That's the horizontal axis. The ethics. I mean, if our, if our church isn't about culture and about helping people to know how they should leave, then what the heck are we? Right. So I think this entire thing is religious. I think that um, and and I think that the reason the church is politically neutral is purely pragmatic because you can't tell me that this is not this use of force and the way the world should be. Those two questions, which are at the heart of these axes, are not fundamentally religious questions. Quaker, I'll give you a, a shot to make some commentary on that. No, you're absolutely right. Last night I was talking to a childhood friend of mine. And we talked about uh, faith. She was raised pretty much agnostic. Um, and, you know, it got to the point of the conversation where I said, Avery, I don't think you're um, I don't think you're an atheist. I think progressivism is your religion. And she said, thank you. That's so kind. Now, 
I know. <laughs> I was that I was kind of being mean, right? That was that was actually a critique, but she actually took that as a compliment, which which tells you, you know, that that, that, that that's pretty interesting. Um, but uh, but ultimately, this entire thing is spiritual, right? I mean, the 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 emotional attachment you have to these political and cultural battles, it, it it's spiritual. You, there there is something within you that is drawn to these principles that come from, you know, your consciousness, your spirit, whatever you want to call it. it, it it's it's clearly there. And I would just say, if you don't believe me, go go to a pro life versus a, a pro choice rally in the streets and just observe. You yeah. can't tell me that's not a spiritual battle. You can't tell it, it. These people aren't talking about the best way to make trains run, right? They're, they're talking about something that 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 is deep seated in them. So I would I would even go so far as to say, even for me, and this is going to sound funny, tax policy, like. For me, that is a religious question. It is a question of, okay, I believe that taxation is theft because that's what it is. You're forcibly taking someone's money without their or, or, or wealth without their their free will. And so to me, how much of that can be allowed and is justified, right, to do that, to forcibly take money from people is a religious question. Thou shalt not steal. Kwaku, I actually want to get your thoughts on this. What is your view of government and its proper role? <laughs> um, I think it boils down to government has two roles to protect people, to protect people's physical lives and to regulate safety. So to protect people. Well, we well summarize is that uh, I, I, I differentiate the two one because to protect people, in in you know we need we need to have an FDA we need to have an EPA we need okay. we, we you know we need to have clean water right mm -hmm. these things the government th this is what the government should do it should protect people but then regulate safety meaning if someone comes yes throws a brick through your window and steals from your store you need police to make sure they don't come and do that again Right, right. So right. at the end of the day, I think that's the role of government is to make sure there is um, there is parameters in which freedom can actually exist because we, so you do need rules to have freedom. I, I, I agree. And I think that this is now what I want to see is kind of where the differentiation comes, because a libertarian, someone who's libertarian leaning like myself on that axis, right, always trying to push towards less government in my life. But then you have to get, well, where, how do we determine where that line is, right? Because some people will say, well, we need, the government's job is to protect people from uh, rent that's too high. Or someone will say the government needs to protect people from speech right. that is harmful to their well-being, right? right so right. how do you have any particular principles by which you determine when the government is justified in forcing people to do things versus not beyond just kind of general safety? Well, uh, the, the issue is we, we're, we're a free market capitalist country. And so, you know, we're, we're not, we're not Canada. We're not Belgium. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously there, there are certain socialist leanings that I, you know, I think are favorable. I think it would be nice sometimes. I mean, the 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 egotistical tribalistic part of me, part of everybody that is prone to authoritarianism when it benefits the things you like, you know what I mean? Um, that part of me says, yes, you know, if 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 slum lords are robbing people monthly, yeah, I want the government to come in and regulate that. But then you also have to ask, okay, the minute we open the door. And tell and let and, and we say yes. The government now you can come in and regulate uh, uh, how how much people are, are 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 being charged for rent. What else? What what else are you letting in? Okay, because you know when you're you're, you're letting in the you're letting in the lamb, but you're also letting in the panther, and uh, and so, I mean, ultimately that's that's where we that's where the debate lies. So I'm I, I can't go out on a limb and say. 
I, I, we can only really comment on what the specific situation would be. Um, but, but, you know, ultimately, I, I, I would like a society that allows people to have the freedom to seek after, you know, if you want to be the richest, you, you can go be the richest. You know, whatever you'd like to do. I, I, I like that we have enough rules that help people to, to actually be free. But at the same time, the minute we get into the nitty gritty, we have to start picking parts on this compass. And, uh, and, and I don't know if I am honestly humble enough to admit or re even realize that my, my authoritarian, you know, uh, 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 stances are something that shouldn't happen. And that's, that's a real, so this is the real question. And if we don't get to all the answers in this podcast, maybe we can propose some questions for people to think about. Okay. Politics is ultimately about. If you're looking at this vertical axis, you're looking at how much force are you willing to use and under what circumstances do you feel that it's justified? What are the principles that govern that, right? As to okay. when it's okay and when it's not. Now, I personally have thought a lot about this question and it's sort of what the, I think the libertarian sort of worldview is based on trying to answer that question. And I think that one of the things that frustrates me with people on the left is that I don't think they've considered that question. And even people on the right, I think authoritarians generally, okay, of any stripe, they think, hey, I want this. And if I use the government, I can get it. Right. And they don't realize, like you're saying, Kwaku, that they're letting in the lion with the lamb. It's like you think that you're just giving the government power to do X but they're going to use it to do Y and Z as well. And once you give power to government, you don't get it back. Can right? I, can I jump in with an example of this? Yeah, go ahead. So I'm, I'm like strongly a fan of, of, of school choice. Like I, the biggest fan of school choice in the world. And it, it always confuses my, both my left wing and my right wing friends. Um, and I, I've been trying to think about how I can appeal more to my left wing friends on this. And I, 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 frankly, I think it's better for the poor. So that's, that's actually the, the primary reason why I care about school choice. But if you want a little thought experiment that I think gets this lion and lamb concept pretty quickly, it's this, do you want the Donald Trump administration being able to give edicts to public schools about how important it is to preach the American, uh, civic religion, uh, via Donald Trump, right? Like, do you want state control of public schools in such a way that they can preach their set of doctrines and your students just have to listen? Like they're not allowed to have another choice. They're not allowed to go another, to another school. And by the way, I think that's actually part of why a lot of right wingers have started homeschooling and going to private schools and other things, because there's kind of this de facto back to something Quaku said. I thought he said it really well. And um, there are a lot of people out there who are like, oh, I'm not religious. But in my schools, we, we had better be talking about social justice. We had better be talking. about, And, and it's just a long list of like, you're not upset that religion is in schools. You're upset that your religion is being taken out of schools and somebody else is being put in, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a really good example of, I want to have, now, now here's where I'll push on you, Jacob. I don't think that's actually a question of the role of government. I think that's a question of what are the appropriate constraints on government, right? I, let, let, me put, let me put it this way. If we were all under a kingdom right now and we were not as American as we are with the revolution and, and limited government is important and the, and the declaration of independence, I think that we would say, when is it right for the king to make us do stuff? And the answer is when it benefits a lot of people. Is it utilitarianism? Is it, is it, is it the net benefit? Is it uh, Rawlsianism where it's whatever helps the poorest the most is the best? And these are, these are old ethical you know, uh, frameworks that I think have been studied to death and I think are really, really interesting. Um, I, I guess what I'm saying is I think the way that we are framing this conversation is itself very libertarianism. It, it, is itself very libertarian where we're saying force bad so let's constrain government as much as possible. And my answer is actually that I think Zion could very well be a highly authoritarian place. Okay, so also... let me let me let me let me fire into this one because this is I think getting to the roots of what we wanted to try and create clarity in this conversation. Okay. I think that the the great political question that we're faced with it is that exact question. What is the basis under which on this vertical axis is force justified? Now, you've mentioned Rawlsianism. There, there's various schools of thought about that, but they all ultimately come down to some sort of an ethical theory, right? 
like utilitarianism, like what is the most good for the most people or what helps the poorest among us or whatever. And I think we as Latter-day Saints need to have that conversation about what if, if our political differences, I think, stem from us having an unclear vision of when violent force is justified. And I believe that Zion, and this is where we could get into a religious debate, is a society with zero coercion at all. That it is, it is full on, it's something probably approaching like an anarcho, uh, anarcho libertarianism, religious communitarianism, where it transcends politics because people conform to the order of Christ voluntarily to such a degree that government no longer is necessary. And so my belief is that government is a necessary evil in the world because it is wrong to force people. And so we should be constantly looking at ways to minimize it while still, as to Kwaku's point, protecting people's God-given rights. And so government's entire purpose is the protection of rights and that is what can justify the use of coercion is the protection of, of, of rights. So, so Kwaku is next in the queue and I want to give him a chance, but I, I have to dive in on this. So Kwaku, if I can, just for a second, I'm, I'm going to yell at Jacob and then I'm going to give you two, two in a row. You, you, you can go ham. Um, I, I feel really strongly about this because I think I really do think, so I, I love what you said before, it, you know, we got to separate our politics from our religion. That does not exist. Nobody does this, right? It's too deeply tied. But I think what we also do is we force our religion to fit our politics. And I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit leery that that's what's going on here. So let me, let me put it really bluntly. Um, it is not, in fact, the, the Republic of Zion. It is not the Democratic Republic of, of Zion. It is the kingdom of Zion. And there is a king, and he is quite literally all powerful. And he absolutely will tell us what to do. So like, I, I'm on board. Like, I believe in libertarianism. It is a great rule of thumb. I am like, super captain libertarian. I think there will be a kingdom and that king will actually enforce edicts. And like when you- Through violent force? No, by, by, by thumbing his nose at people. Yeah, like, I, like he, he, whose sword is terrible. Like I, what, what is his word is terrible, like a two-edged sword, right? Like the whole point of the scriptures is to say, ain't nobody gonna mess with this guy, right? Like he is going to lay down. He's gonna, he's gonna lay this you mess sound. Down. You sound like the Jews circa 50 BC when they were waiting well, for that political messiah to show well, up. Let me give a very specific example <laughs> here. I actually think that libertarianism has a number of flaws, and I'll give you a couple. Number one, it's this idea that the government shouldn't be producing culture. There should be no involvement. It's just hands off, do whatever you want to. And what they're completely missing is that eventually some guy named Donald Trump's going to come along and sweep the vacuum that has been created, create his own culture, and then absolutely, you know, wreak havoc in our politics. It is not possible to just put your hands up and go, I'm agnostic on culture, and it doesn't work. I think another one of these is there, there is this deep human desire to see a strong political figure take power. And I think that that is something that we're seeing right now. Why is Donald Trump winning? Because he is winning. Because we want a winner who wins a lot to be the winningest winner of all. And when you ask people, they look, I, I had a recent debate. You might have heard. Why do I like Donald Trump? Because his policies are good and he is effective. I think that the kingdom of Zion will actually be a kingdom. And I think now let me let me put it this way. I think the better you can you can teach and the more uh, let me uh, what, what's the old what's the old quote from the Federalist Papers? Um, uh, if 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 government were made of angels, then there or would if be men no were, If them. men were angels, there'll be no need of government. And the reverse is also true. If presidents and Congress people were angels, then the people would have no need of a constitution. We would have no need for constricting government to say it needs to be this small. And so in either case, what we know defines Zion is not political philosophy. What we know does define Zion is the goodness of the people, the wisdom of the people, the decency of the people. I think that's why it's so important to talk morality. I disagree with both of you <laughs> on on the subject of Zion. Um, so, for one, I, yes, uh, Zion is a kingdom, but I think that it, Zion is a kingdom in the same way, um, uh, you know, uh, the horses in the Book of Mormon are horses. Um, so, the scriptures t t say Zion is a kingdom, but also the Lord says He's going to make a full end of all the nations. Right to uh, uh, the the founder of the first city, according to the Bible, is Cain. 
you know, the government governments and scripture are created by the evil ones. And when Satan brings Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration, he he says, worship me and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. And you have to ask, well, why does Satan have the authority to give all the kingdoms to Jesus? So kingdoms inherently are not are not. It's not like this blueprint that can be good or bad. They, they are inherently bad. And I think the only phrase, the, the all, I think trying to describe what Zion is, we can't understand it. The best example we have in scripture is Enoch. And whenever they become Zion, God just takes them all up to heaven. I don't think Zion's going to be anything like what we imagine at all. I don't, yes, there's a kingdom, but I don't really think we're going to yeah. have a king. Let I me, said it. Let I me, think we're, because we're going to be so one with Christ, he's not going to need to govern. I, I okay, think but, Quaker, we may be we may be closer than you think. Let me let me do this and I'll give you the floor, Ben. So this just to, as an observation here to create the clarity amongst the differences politically that we have. Notice what we're getting down to. Each one of us have a very different conception of what Zion is. Zion being the ideal society. Okay. We all three of us want to build. Zion. But if we all have fairly significantly different ideas of what Zion is, that can create division, right? Because of a lack of clarity. Now, I think that there's a very interesting discussion to have surrounding that topic of what is Zion? What is, and when we use the word Zion, I will just insert ideal society because that's what it functionally is in our theology. And it is for sure people of one heart and one mind, right? And I think that's, so my my sort of argument for what Zion is begins with that. When you have a people who are aligned with Christ, okay, Zion emerges. It isn't a kingdom that is imposed through force and, a, and a, the perfect system of government with the perfect leader as it were, imposing from the top down. I believe Zion is what emerges when human beings live the laws of the celestial of God that bring them into right relationship with one another and with God, and they do so out of love for one another. And that means government isn't necessary. Like, you don't need police if no one is stealing from each other. You don't need the military if people, you don't need a welfare state if people are voluntarily taking care of the poor. We fill the gaps with government force that aren't supposed to be there. And so when people are right with God and one another, Zion emerges as this new kind of kingdom. Now, my connection, I would say, to the United States and why I believe our constitution was divinely inspired was because the idea behind our founding revolution was a fairly new and revolutionary sort of idea of limiting government and, and propagating liberty and virtue. Okay. Virtue being people living right and voluntarily doing what is right. Okay. And liberty meaning this is the precursor to virtue. You are not virtuous by paying your taxes because you have to pay your taxes. Even if it goes to help people that are poor, you're not like you don't get credit for that. You get credit when you actually voluntarily go and do that. And so in my mind, Zion is, is like literally the opposite of government because government is force and Zion, everything in Zion is done by the power of persuasion and love. And if you think that's unrealistic, I say, I agree. That's the whole thing. We're in a fallen world. And yeah, eventually yeah. this there will be a separation between those who want to live the laws of Zion and those who do not. And those who follow Christ will have this ideal society. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button so my future videos show up on your feed. Also, if you or someone that you know has benefited from the content here on Thoughtful Faith, please consider becoming a channel donor or volunteer by visiting my new website, thoughtfulfaith.org, and clicking on the Get Involved page.